Hello everyone. In the last class, what we have discussed how to manufacture thermally bonded roving using flax and polypropylene, where polypropylenes are aligned towards the axis of the roving and there is no twist imparted in the strand. And today I will discuss the manufacturing of composite out of this flax PP thermally bonded roving. The two approaches will be discussed here as I have already mentioned in last class that one will be unidirectional composite, another will use that thermally bonded roving for converting to oven fabric. So, the composites will be manufactured using that thermally bonded roving. So, as already been mentioned that the flax being hydrophilic in nature. So, it is not compatible with the hydrophobic polypropylene fiber. So, polypropylene as a matrix. So, what has been done that surface modification of flax was done using malic anhydrite grafted polypropylene, polypropylene. So, which is known as MAGPP. Okay. So, is using this MAGPP treatment, we can use this grafted or surface modified polypropylene, sorry surface modified flax fiber as the reinforcing material when polypropylene is used as matrix. Okay. This is the surface treatment if we see the before surface treatment of flax fiber, there is no such chemical deposition and these are the MAGPP. In fact, this MAGPP helps in proper binding with the polypropylene matrix. And we will see the characteristics without treatment and with treatment. So, with, with treatment we have seen the significant improvement in uh, properties. So, if you see here, here we have used 50-50 polypropylene and flax ratio and we have fabricated the composite using film stacking technique and this 50 50 ratio is at the composite stage. If we see in the thermally bonded roving stage, what we have used it is a 60 40, 60 percent flax and 40 percent polypropylene and once we add extra film polypropylene film in between the series of rovings. So, polypropylene percent has increased. So, it up ultimately it has become 50 50. So, if we see the picture here that is graphs here that is MAGPP treated composite and untreated composite the ten, both tensile strength and tensile modular in case of treated composite is higher than untreated. So, what we have done for further studies we have used the treated flax fiber composites. So, MAGPP treated flax fibers are used for our further studies. 
this is a photograph of the composite making uh, process which is unidirectional composites. These are thermally bonded rovings parallelly red, this parallel led TBR and these are the PP films, this is one of the PP films. So, layer by layer it has been placed. So, this in the mold and this is metal frame and by compression molding the composite was manufactured. Okay. Here we have taken three different variables again. This is number of passages, passage 2, 4 and 6 passages where natural fiber percent in the unidirectional composite was kept 60 percent. Another variable was that the natural fiber component was 40, 50 and 60. So, this is polypropylene content, flax content and this is at the total composite stage will be ultimately 50 50 composite to what we have prepared it is up to 50 50, but these are the in the TBR stage thermally bonded rowing stage number of passages and the treatment temperature for all the composites we have used here it is a 210. So, thermally bonded roving which has been produced at 210 were used in this composite making process. So, after consolidation if we see this is the scanning electron microscope image where the polypropylene and flax it is clear that they are mixed almost uniformly. Now, if you see the property here with the blue bars, this is tensile strength and the gray color it is a tensile modulus in F means natural fiber component 40 percent, 50 percent and 60 percent and P means number of drawing passages, first three combinations their drawing passages are constant. Here passage is 4, here passage is 2. Now, if you see once we increase the natural fiber component, we see the tensile strength of the composite increases, which we have already seen for thermally bonded roving stage. And also, once we increase the number of passages 2, 4, 6, we observe that both tensile strength and tensile modulus increases. The tensile behavior of unidirectional composite improves with the increase in flax fiber content and with the increase in degree of PP mixing, which is indirectly shown by number of passages. The flexural property also shows the similar trend that is with the increase in the natural fiber component and with the increase in number of passages the flexural strength increases the bending strength 
bending stress it is a it increases and if we see the green a this is natural fiber component 60 and passage 6 this one it is giving highest bending stress. So, composite made with thermally bonded roving having 60 percent flax and 6 drawing passages shows best result. So, these are the pictures of fractured composite samples. Here we can see for say 60 percent natural fiber component after fracture we can see here this is polypropylene rich region and this is here we can see it is a polypropylene rich regions where it is a white patches we can see. Even at the four drawing passages, we can still observe the polypropylene rich zones, but when we increase the this passages to 6, these are uniform. So, basically if we have to produce the thermally bonded roving using natural fiber and say thermoplastic matrix fiber. So, we have to use more number of drawing passage for better blending. So, this is the same image it is showing similar effect polypropylene rich and matrix rich components are also there, but if we see these are the polypropylene and uh, matrix zone. Here interestingly we can see here at two passages the zones for matrix zone and fiber rich zone matrix rich and fiber rich zones are larger in size. But as we go on increasing the number of passages, this matrix zone and fiber rich zones are becoming smaller and smaller that is obvious because of the proper blending. Now, if we see this pictures, this shows that after flexural strength testing what is happening? Here this is compression side and this one is a tensile side. In compression side with number of five some passages of say 6 as they are evenly distributed this matrix and reinforcing fibers are evenly distributed there is no delamination or less delamination, but at lower level of mixing we can see they are getting easily delaminated. So, this uh, trend we have already seen with the increase in number of passages from 2, 4, 6 the flexural strength and flexural modulus increases and also with the number of uh, uh, proportion of natural fiber the trend is increasing trend of flexural strength and the flexural modulus. Now, impact strength of MAG treated composite if we see it we are getting the similar trend that means 
the impact strength increases with the number of passages from 2, 4 and 6 it increases and also with the number of same number of passages of 6 if we increase the proportion of natural fiber content 40, 50, 60 the impact strength increases. So, the summary which we are we can conclude here the degree of flax and polypropylene mixing in the resultant composite structure increases with the increase increasing flax content and number of drying passages and also the mechanical properties of thermally bonded roving uh, that composite made of thermally bonded roving increases with the increase in flax content that is reinforcing fiber content and with the increase in the degree of mixing that is number of passages. Next study was that is the oven fabric we have developed the plain oven fabric and we have compared with the and after making oven fabric we have developed composites by film stacking technique and the composite made of film stacking techniques that the oven fabric the characteristics of this composite was compared with the unidirectional composite as already been just discussed and also with the, for reference we have taken the glass fiber reinforced composite. What we have done? We have developed unidirectional fabric and plain fabric. So, the difference here is that in unidirectional fabric we have used in the warp the polypropylene filament polypropylene filament with the with very low ends per inch. We can use this thermally bonded roving for warp also. Now, let us see suppose this is T B R thermally bonded roving. What we have done? So, this is warp. Warp P P filament. P P filaments. Okay. Now here, what we have used this T B R already made as weft. effectively. So, this is a, a, a fabric this is a, say preform preform and this as it is P P warp is P P. So, this fabric once we produce composite out of this fabric by film stacking technique this polypropylene will be mixed with the 
matrix component. Effectively, we will see this direction web direction this T B R will have the fiber reinforcing exists uh, fiber aligned to the this direction only aligned to. So, that is why we call it as unidirectional composite. Another approach what we have used, we have used this T B R this is approach 1 in approach 2 what we have done this T B R was used both for warp and weft. Although in T B R we know thermally bonded roving here both P P plus flax are present here. Now, this oven fabric plain oven fabric was used to manufacture the composite by again film stacking technique. So, so th these two different structures were developed. This is unidirectional fabric and this is plain oven fabric. TBR based oven fabrics are consolidated in a compression molding machine and composite laminates having flax and PP ratio of 50 50 were produced. So, uh, using the PP film. So, final product, final composite where the polypropylene and flax proportion was 1 is to 1. So, composite laminate using plain oven glass fabric and polypropylene sheet also were produced use keeping the ratio of glass fiber and polypropylene 1 is to 1 again. So, we have used glass fiber as reinforcing just this is just for comparison. Now, this is the now we can see here this is unidirectional uh, rovings are arranged in unidirection here rovings are used for both warp and weft. So, the thermally bonded rowing with the 60 percent flax were used ultimately in the composite it has become 50 50. So, two different types of fabrics were used unidirectional fabric and plain oven fabric it is called U D we are calling it as U D and this is P W and this is oven fabric and once the composite is manufactured by film stacking technique. So, this is the surface we have observed for few fabrics few some specific zones the void or uh, improper uh, melting was there due to some composite making uh, problem and we have eliminated all those samples. So, PP sheets are placed after each fabric layer to reduce the void, void content. So, we use this we found that if we do not use PP sheet after each layer. So, void content increases. So, we have used PP sheet after each layer. So, composite ultimately having 50 percent flax. So, roving UD or roving plain oven and also for glass plain oven fabric they are produced. Okay. This is showing the fracture type of fracture basically. Roving plain oven composite, the plain oven composite shows the multiple fracture and also 
unidirectional ro roving we have seen there are more than one uh, fracture point, but in case of glass oven composite the fracture takes place it is in its weakest point okay, at single place unit point fracture has been observed. But if you see the tensile strength, tensile strength of glass composite it was much higher than the flax based composite. This is actually ultimately strain and stress here. So, glass is having much higher than the roving plane oven and roving unidirectional. So, unidirectional is showing higher than the plane oven fabric with the obvious reason because unidirectional roving composite the fibers are aligned straight towards the stress direction whereas, in plane oven roving this is a plane oven roving the rovings are little bit crimped when we placed inside the composite that is why the strain is much higher. Similarly, if we compare the tensile strength and tensile modulus with the glass plane oven fabric these are much lower both tensile strength and tensile modulus are lower than the glass plane oven fabric. But once we compare the specific tensile modulus, so this is the modulus this is tensile strength once we compare the specific tensile modulus these are specific tensile strength both specific tensile strength and specific tensile modulus the roving unidirectional roving or roving ud is comparable or better than the glass plane oven fabric that means if we take the mass into consideration so for unit mass the strength of flax pp composite particularly unidirectional composite it is showing better result than or equivalent result as compared to the glass plane oven composite. But plane oven roving still is showing lower modulus and strength that is mainly due to the crimp present in the fabric which is giving higher strain and lower strength. Now, this is roving plane oven fabric where we have observed we have already discussed multiple places there are damages this is unidirectional roving and this is glass pp plane oven. Interesting we can see for glass pp plane oven composite at the compressional side when we bend due to uh, during a flexural testing delamination is taking place, but this delamination lamination is absent in case of flax polypropylene composite which is very good sign as far as the flexural characteristics is concerned. Here we can see during the flexural stress and deflection curve in this curve we can see here during flexural testing although the flexural strength is high, but 
due to delamination it is not able to the composite is not able to sustain that load suddenly the stra uh, stress drops, but on the other hand the flax polypropylene roving based composite although their ultimate bending strength is low lower than the glass, but still they maintain certain stress level. So, if we the flexural strength and this is the flexural strength of roving plane open roving. So, these are lower than the glass, but as we have already seen the specific stress if we see it will be at com uh, comparable with the glass. As far as impact strength is concerned, we have used the drop weight impact tester and here we have to use a plate like specimen. This is the impactor and here if we see the glass plane open glass fabric there is a crack formation. This crack formation is due to delamination mainly and the diameter of the hole created is much lower than the plane oven roving or unidirectional roving composite. So, the damage area for glass is has been observed 400 around 450 square millimeter plane oven roving it is 512 and unidirectional roving it is very high here it is a 960 square millimeter impact load versus time response the impact load is higher here and roving plane oven roving it is followed by plane oven roving and unidirectional roving is actually behaving in the, in the inferior manner as we have seen in the earlier picture okay. in unidirectional roving it is giving higher damage area. So, peak force and energy absorption. So, energy absorption in glass is much higher than the unidirectional roving composite and it is also higher than the plane oven composite. So, we will end this session now here. In next class, we will start with the characterization of fiber reinforced composite materials till then thank you.